Mr. Speaker, today I was able to welcome and introduce a number of guests from the Imperial Sovereign Court of the Wild Rose, part of the Imperial Court system of drag queens and kings, which exists across Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. Now, Mr. Speaker, I've been honoured for several years to introduce the reigning court to this assembly. I do this because I am very proud of my drag queens and kings for their style, elegance and skills. And I also do it because I want people to know of the important charitable work these courts do across the continent. Now, these courts take their protocols seriously. Few events I attend these days are truly formal or black tie, never mind white tie, but these guys and gals take their, um, take their, uh, their long, carefully followed series of ceremonies and requirements, and they more than meet the dress code. Now, each upper house of newly elected empresses and emperors is expected to travel to visit other cities in Canada, and that means new frocks, new shoes, new accessories, and hair. The higher the hair, the closer to God. It's a tremendous <laughs> personal commitment. This year, they're 36th. No one could make that commitment of time and money. So according to protocol, the previous three empresses and emperors were asked to serve as regents. And today we have one of the three regent empresses, Marnie Gras, with us in the gallery. As a joint decision, decision, the regents are focusing their fundraising efforts on youth in their community this year, which includes the Firefly Youth Leadership Camp, a new camp the court created with HIV Edmonton for children with HIV and their families called the Millicent Red Diamond Camp, and they support safe place initiatives in Alberta schools and anti-bullying campaigns and projects. And by a safe place, they mean for all children, not just those of the GLBT community. The immense heart and generosity of the International Sovereign Court of the Wild Rose and their empresses and emperors. It's